Hello and welcome to the Invincible Podcast, probably the best superhero podcast in the universe. This is a show where friends get to talk all things Invincible, a comic book and animated series created by Robert Kirkman, Corey Walker, and Ryan Otley. Uh, On this episode, we've got a ton to go over. Uh, We're going to be giving away uh, some more things for the Guarding the Globe mobile game. We have a bunch of listener emails. We have our full pre-recorded thoughts on episode seven and a bunch more. And there are time codes down below for you to skip around if you'd like to jump to any of those. Um, But before we do that, I am one of your hosts, Wyatt, and joining me, as always, is Ryan. Hello, everybody. Bill. Hi. And the sweet one, TJ. Oh, hello! Whoa! TJ! Whoa. Mickey Mouse is down! <laughs> <laughs> Keep going! How many times are you going to introduce yourself, TJ? Anymore? <laughs> Not anymore. It's TJ, it's Mickey Mouse. We need to start adding, Mickey like, Mouse. yeah, we have it, the sweet one, Mickey Mouse. TJ. That's what we need to do all Be like, It's because uh, everybody rifle. loves fucking Rexplode, and they're like, oh, TJ, you're right. So TJ's head is getting bigger and bigger, and I fucking hate it. He's having a moment. It's this true. Is a He's dark time. A I have been Bill. saying <laughs> dark for time. Bill, it'll come around. It'll come around. Yeah, I've been, saying, I've been saying for eight years on this podcast. I, I, I just feel like you know people need to give him a chance. People, and I said when it was announced as a show, watch and see. Rex Bullard's going to be a favorite, and this, mm-hmm. this was the week, and he has been blowing up on Twitter, and I've been loving all the memes and all the tweets and all so the. Much gifts that we we got more gifts now to use and i can use it in every text yeah. conversation and yeah <laughs> i'm enjoying it especially especially with us having you know gotten the privilege to watch some of these episodes early before when episode five came out and everybody was already like man rex is awesome it's so cool knowing that he has more great moments in six and now more great moments in seven yeah. it's been so cool to like see people you know, a kind of a big surge at first of new fans of Rexplode, but to see that just grow week to week has been really cool. Oh, it's yeah. cool too wait. because because as as we're recording this episode seven hasn't dropped yet, so episode six um, dropped, and there's all this love for Rexplode and how he like got up and killed uh, King Lizard after getting shot in the head and everything. So then, I mean, you guys have the listeners have seen it now, but. Episode seven was a great episode for Rex. So that wasn't even them reacting to all the stuff that happened in seven. So yeah. looking forward to seeing how people react now. So yeah, good stuff for oh, Rex. Yeah. yeah. And, cool. and, a, so and a great episode. Like, I can't wait. I know we're going to get into it later in our full recap, but like seeing, uh, you know, Wyatt put together our like initial impression highlight reel thing and like seeing the teaser trailer for episode seven, like episode seven is incredible. And you guys know it now because you've watched it, but like, this is so great. It's such a great time. It really is. Uh, we're going to kick things off in this first part of the show, though, with announcing the winners from last week's giveaway for Guarding the Globe. So, Ryan, do you want to tell us who our three yes, lucky winners that's right. are? Ubisoft Bros. Alona has been great with us, uh, letting us know and giving us a head start on the um, Battle Beast uh, event that happened over the last week. Uh, so, yeah, if you're watching this last weekend um, and letting us announce that to everybody on the podcast here. And they're giving away five of the hero dossiers, the ones that give away, um, uh, let you clear the entire board, let you get to see every or get everyone in the shop. And so we're giving away uh, three of those, five dossiers to three winners. Um, and just opening up my game right now. Uh, and those are going to Tricky Man who said in the comments, uh, as someone who read the comics as a kid, I'm really enjoying the fact that Invincible has become so mainstream. Usually with most of my friends, I'm the one to catch up on things last, but now I'm the one introducing them. Uh, That was our first winner. Our second winner is Danny Boy F, uh, who let us know who his top hero level is, uh, or who his top hero is, and it's Invincible at level 219. And then we got Seha6169, who says, bro, this season is so goaded so far. Honestly, I can't wait for the rest. So congrats to you three. Your uh, your uh, dossier should will probably already be in your uh, uh, in your game by the time you get this. Um, but yeah, I wanted to ask you guys before we move on to some other stuff, though. What did you guys think of the Battle Beast event? How did you uh, fare? And uh, did you get them? So I... I got three by the end of it. I got three Battle Beasts by the end of it. I only I got, got zero battle beast. I only zero. got one. 
uh, but I'll take it. I was glad because for the alien, the alien, the alien event, I didn't. I still have yet to see Alan in this game, other than for purchase. And I, I didn't purchase. I'm, I'm going to try and hold off. Yeah, I want to get him naturally, but I have not seen him in the shop. I, or I'm sorry, in the um, uh, any of the uh, randomized, you know, the recruitment. Yeah, the, I like, haven't seen him in the. Area, yeah. I haven't seen him in the uh, uh, event, so. Yeah. So I was happy yeah. to get Battle Beast in this one. I only got one. It was kind of relatively early on. But yeah, I'll take it. I got I got one Battle Beast other than the one Ubisoft sent us, but we got I got the one the last day during the last like ticket refresh that I got. Um and yeah, otherwise I saved up a lot of, you know, uh of the currency uh just in case he showed up and ended up getting a ton of Titan though. Like a ton of Titan, which yeah. was kind of great. I kept cause... seeing them, but I wasn't going for them. I let them yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things I like about these, both of the events so far, is that even when I'm not getting like the character that's highlighted, whether it's Alan or Battle Beast, because it's a different like recruitment window and it's a different kind of currency and you can earn a lot more of them through the like challenges or the missions or whatever, mm -hmm. I feel like I, I have used those to get more heroes that i'm using to level up the other ones that i have than i do typically so it's it's been really cool that they've had those events and so close together like there's had wasn't really a huge gap between the allen one and the battle beast one so i'm excited to see them keep adding things yeah. to it yeah and like you're saying like it, even though it was a battle beast event i got so much other stuff for other characters too he's just like the yeah. like oh this could pop up while you're playing which was pretty cool mm -hmm. Um, and I like how last week we were talking about how our alliance got up to a level 11 and it's like a region 11. It's like, oh, I think we hit a wall, but it's like, well, we pushed through and now we're at 12, which is cool. But now I think we're at a wall. And so it'll yeah. be interesting yeah. to see if we can keep pushing through. Um, mm -hmm. I also who do you, still, like who do you guys still want to see? Oh, well, that's actually the question I want to ask everybody for the oh. next giveaway. So leave yeah. a comment with your username, which is your, you know, your name at the top of your screen on the main thing, or if you go into your settings, it's your, you know, your player name. Um, leave your player name in there uh, for your chance to win. And this time, let us know who you want to see next in the game. Now, keep it only people that have appeared in the show, because that's what they're going by. The, you know, the the, the their yeah. abilities and everything like that are going to be things from the show. So nobody that's going to appear later in the comics. Um, okay. And so yes. with that being said, who's your, who's yours? I have mine. mine. <clears throat> I feel I have, like I, I have mine first. I mean, especially it ties into our, dis our mm -hmm. upcoming discussion about episode seven. Yeah. Give me Octoboss. I'm trying oh, to that was mine. level up yeah. my criminals. That was give mine. Me give me Octoboss. That'd be such a good one. That would Dirty be cool. bastard. Dirty I did not bastard. even think about that. That's great. That was I was, at, and I I was going to say, say anyone. I thought you were going to say, say he's in the show now. He was in episode seven. So now you know. I True. thought you were going to say Anissa because there are certain characters like Alan or Battle Beast that like their abilities play off of having Viltrumites around. So yeah. we need some more Viltrumites in the game. And we've got... What if they added like Lucan and Vidor? Oh, oh and, we need uh, Thula. Uh, Thula? Yes. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. That would be really cool. So many good oh, Could you imagine if we got like a Viltrumite event and then Ooh. like all those different characters were options to win? Yeah, man, more likely sick. to show up in the shop with a new one yeah. added. Um mm -hmm. Man, who else? There's there's a guardian that we still don't have. Shapesmith. We need Shapesmith. Oh, yeah. We need Shapesmith. That'd be yeah. really cool. And yeah, imagine some of his cool. abilities changing into different things. That'd be neat. Mm -hmm. or your, oh, even, and Russ, even other heroes. Russ Livingston. As a oh, villain. Yeah, with like the sequids. Having yeah. the sequids. Yeah. Use them as yeah. an ability. That would yeah. be kind of cool. complicated, but it'd be interesting. Donald. Donald could be really? cool. Maybe once we see more of him in the show, if he's going to end up yeah. taking more action. Yeah. Um. But yeah, been, it's been fun. And uh, there's a good chance we're going to have more to talk about Guarding the Globe. After the season finale, we're going to do an episode where I think we, um, we're aiming to have someone from the team on the show and we're going to talk more about it. So uh, queue up some of your questions and everything like that and thoughts. And that, that'll, that'll be a really fun time. Talk a little bit more about what's coming next in the game. Yeah. So yeah. Very cool. Very cool. And that brings us to our next section which is what you guys all thought of episode six so we have some emails here and i believe bill you're gonna go ahead and read the first one i shall hey gang uh i just watched episode five this is from mp uh episode five and i was especially looking forward to this one because the issue of the comic with the sequids and lizard league battles was the first invincible i read 
and in fact got me back to reading monthly comics after years whoa wow. that's cool that's very cool uh i re i rewatched the first four episodes directly before five and the slower quieter first half seemed like perfect pacing it's similar to how anime series will have a big all action episode then the next will be a little break and i really loved all the conversations especially between mark and debbie about oliver that felt so realistic that's what really sets Invincible apart. Our other superheroes, other superhero stories have done extreme violence or attempted to be gritty and real, but they usually treat every character like they're a sociopath. Invincible has real human emotion and characters feel the way ordinary people would feel going through these events. Uh, he goes, uh, MP goes on to predict that Angstrom, that the Angstrom fight, um, or at least showing up at Mark's house will happen in episode seven and that's the Cecil confrontation will happen in the finale. Mm. Mm. Uh, MP also has a few interesting comic theories, um, but we want to keep the, the spoiler free and they're pretty far ahead in the comic. Um, but right back after the breakdown uh, episodes and we'll discuss. Yeah. Very Love cool. MP. Yeah. Sorry, Bill. I, I I did edit his email a little bit there at the end because it was a little long. We have a lot of emails to get through, but I do want to keep it a little spoiler free MP just because we got a new, a lot mm -hmm. of comic uh, or show only watchers checking out these episodes, but you had some really interesting theories and I want to talk more about them later. Hmm. Um, I have one here from Guillermo. They say, hey guys, I cannot believe that Ray survived the absolutely brutal death scene from the previous episode. What an amazing we. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What an amazing cheating death moment for a character that became one of my favorites in the show. In the comics, Ray didn't really capture my interest as a character. So when he got chomped on by Komodo in a quick and less painful way, it didn't affect me as much. But in the show, I really liked the redesign they gave her and how they made her a more integral member of the Guardians team which made me increasingly scared as I watched the show, knowing what was going to happen with the Lizard League, dreading that they were going to end her run so soon in the show. When that moment finally came, it affected me all week, even though I knew it was coming, especially when I opened the Guarding the Globe game because she's on the main screen and one of my high-ranked characters. <laughs> so when they zoomed in on Komodo's decapitated body and it started to flinch and I could hear audible groans, I shouted, no way, as Ray emerged, covered in blood and still breathing. What a shock. I'm still shocked. Anyway, glad Ray is still alive for now, at least. Love the pod. Keep preaching the good word of Invincible, Guillermo. Thank you. Very cool. That was great. Another thing that I wanted to bring up about Ray surviving that I didn't really notice until watching the episode again because i told you guys i'm wa re watching the episodes with nicole now um and when ray comes out of komodo dragon it doesn't seem like she is full size like she doesn't she, and when you they cut to her in the hospital bed she's very small in the hospital yes bed. and it could be a very large like chamber but she looks tiny it, like she looks like she's half size i've been wanting to talk I about didn't notice the first time yeah and it it makes me wonder if like she She's was like, damaged to the point where she can't get back to her normal size yeah. like, until hmm. she fully recovers. And like, like, it's really interesting. And I wasn't sure because I thought the same thing on, on subsequent rewatches and everything. And I was like, okay, so Komodo's really big. So maybe he just looks really big or maybe that's just a really big hospital like tube chamber that she's in. And it's like, yeah. I couldn't quite tell if it was... So I'm still not 100%, but it definitely does look like she is not full size like she is yeah. like stuck in in the middle um which again begs the question like can she only go from very small to her normal size or can yeah. she change and did she just stop like did she just get to a point and then just was, she was all her bones and, yeah, broke and keep going yeah. yeah and she couldn't get Crazy. full size because all her bones broke and yeah yeah i don't know but very cool that we'll probably get to hopefully explore that in you know, future stories now that she's not gone yep. and she is actually still around. And that'll be brand new for, for comic readers, especially since that was a change from the comic. Yeah. Very cool. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I right. have a, Moving on. yeah, TJ, you have one. I have a, an email from our friend Brady. He says, Hey y'all, holy shit. What an episode. Definitely one of my favorites of the series. I'm on the third rewatch and it gets better and better with every watch. Season one was great. But as an avid comic fan, season two has that same Invincible Kirkman comic feel that I love so much. The fact that we got so much this episode, 
It feels like I'm jumping from page to page from the comics. Best adaptation ever. The best part of it are all the subtle changes they're making from the source material like Donald, Shrinking Ray, Amber, etc. Keeps us comic readers on the edge of our seats. My question to you all is, which subtle or even big change from the source material so far has improved the story for you? Mine has to be Debbie's story arc. Uh, love listening to your breakdown after every episode. Keep up your great, the great work, gents, from Brady. Oh, I feel like Debbie is the quick and easy answer, like the no brainer, mm -hmm. like what they've done with her with her character compared to the comics has been night and day and it's been incredible. Um, but then my next one would have also been Amber. I mean, I yeah. loved what they did with Amber in the comic. I loved the whole love triangle stuff. I thought it was a lot of fun and just kind of like, you know, a, a fun take on that trope that we already know. But then to take what I thought I really liked in the comic and then give Amber, you know, this kind of character and so much more character development. And um, and then especially after episode seven, like um, that was incredible. So, I mean, yeah. those two off the top of my head. Yeah, it's hard for me to think of another like significant change, especially with this season, because like Brady says, it is very much like you're turning the pages of the comic. This this season has been more, you know, it, I think at Comic-Con last year, Kirkman said it's going to be even more invincibly mm -hmm. than season one was. And it's definitely true. There's not I don't think there's as many like obvious changes. And yeah, the the change with Amber and her and Mark's relationship and the way that it evolves through this season, I think is definitely my favorite because mm -hmm. it it changes it from, like you said, Ryan, that trope of sort of a love triangle where it's Mark trying to figure out who he should be with or who he wants to be with to Mark learning what it means to be a superhero and also have a girlfriend and have somebody that you love and how difficult that is going to be. Like, it makes it much more, I think it makes it a lot more complex the way that they did it in the show. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. makes it, that that just makes that storyline a lot more interesting to me, I think. Yeah, and I think Brady that's what I was going to say. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was, I, that's what I was going to say kind of what Wyatt said is I, I wouldn't really pick a character, but I would pick the relationship between the three of them, Amber, Eve, and Mark. And it's it's evolving in a way that seems more natural and less mm -hmm. theatrical. Yeah. Um, where even in the comic book, it, it, it played on the tropes in a funny way where this is like really grounding it in a, in a way that makes it where when they, if, and when they do get together, I don't want to spoil too, too much, but um, it feels better. It doesn't feel like he was kind of dismissing Amber in a way. It's really about what's best for both of them as yeah. opposed to. Yeah. And how much Mark. it so, hurts both of them. Yeah. 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 It feels better. It yeah. feels like a better, like evolution of the characters to where you can natural. Yeah. But yeah. also, that it's not so much like the comic either, like even from other aspects, otherwise it would be kind of unwatchable for comic readers. Right. Cause we already know it. It's like Brady said, the subtle, the subtle changes or the additions like, uh, Omni man's, you know, alien wife and dresser. We got m so much more with her than we got in the comic Thula. Yeah. Um, uh, everything with, uh, like the just conversations Rex and Eve in, in the bedroom, yeah. like uh, just talking things like that, that are, that are, putting the pieces that we know from the comic together, but it's all those middle pieces that are connecting them that are still amazing. Um, yeah. 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 And I guess I should also shout out Omni man flying by the black hole oh, since I have a tattoo. Yes. Of yeah, that getting, on my arm. Getting to see like, that. Moments like, like that where they just it. build the character. Like, oh my gosh. And, and Debbie yeah, with so green ghosts, boyfriend, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that, like stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Crazy. So good. Yep. But again, I guess that kind of goes back to Debbie, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Indeed. I have an email here from Luis Cortez. Uh, it says, hi, Invincible Podcast crew. This is Luis Cortez again with my thoughts and doodle for episode 206. Overall, awesome episode as usual. Looking forward to the remaining two. Answering Ryan's question, I think Shrinking Gray surviving definitely di diminishes the shock of the Lizard League's attack. Uh, the only benefit I could see from it for episode 206 is maybe allowing Rex time alone with Mark and Eve 
while the Guardians attend to Rey. However, I can think of two possible reasons why the writers would want to keep Rey alive. Maybe they want to explore Rey's character as she recovers from the trauma of the event, though I doubt it since so far Rey has been used as a background character and Rex could also exhibit similar trauma mm -hmm. from the attack. Another reason is maybe they want her to stick around to fight in future Invincible events, such as issue 60 of the comics. This would make sense since it seems the show won't have access to all the cameo characters appearing in that issue. Of course, maybe the reason Ray sticks around is just to allow her to continue appearing in other media based on the Invincible IP, like the video games and board games, though I would be disappointed if this were the case. As always, I attach my doodle for the episode. I had the most fun with this one so far. I guess it is now obvious I love doodling the quirky alien characters from the show. Shout out to Jonathan Reyes, uh, who shared his character designs for the show yeah. on Twitter, including the fellow from my doodle. So, so much of this, like, yes, agree with all the Ray stuff. I, I hope they, I, I, I trust the writers that they have plans. We've talked about it before. I know, you know, it feels like season two and three are kind of being written as one big season in a way that the things that they're doing in two, they're writing intentionally for things that will happen in three. Um, and, you know, we trust the writers that, that they, they yeah. didn't, they will kill char characters if they, if they think it's the right thing to do and not if yeah. they have an, a plan for them. The moment that I start being let down by the writers, then I'll start working. Yeah. But I have not been let down mm -hmm. once by the show yet. So, yep. and this doodle is incredible. This is <laughs> yes. this is it one is of awesome. the designs that I joked about how I want to post his bail to get him out of this <laughs> prison because he's such a ridiculous, like half pug, half muscly. It's so good, dude. It's just so great. It yeah. is really good. Yep. That's fantastic. It makes me angry that people are so good. <laughs> yeah, I love that one. This is. Uh, small tangent here but it made me think of this because i've seen some people i want to say on the invincible subreddit talking about this theorizing about why ray stuck around and whether or not there could be a possible like relationship between rex and ray i did that see like that. they both went through this traumatic thing together and you know rex is now obviously not with eve not with kate he's kind of on his own now and somebody pointed out that like on the the season two poster where they're all on the bus ray is like sitting on rex's shoulder which i'm sure is just huh. you have a small character you put him on somebody's shoulder but interesting possibility i like yeah. i like that idea just as a a possibility that could happen yeah that's kind of cool huh could also provide them right. more uh, issue 60 implications as well. If they yeah, were that right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. yeah we'll Possibilities. see. Possibilities. Possibilities. Damn. And then we oh. have one last one. Bill, I'm, I'm kicking it back to you. If All you're right. willing to read a second one for us. Sure, sure thing. Uh, hey, guys, another great episode. And IGN finally seems to think so, too. Um, <laughs> while this isn't my favorite episode, Rexplode definitely takes the cake for best title card gag yeah uh their revisit to rex's story is really tugging at my heartstrings for uh of everybody i wonder if we just all hate rex for not for just not the douchiness but i think there's spoilers yeah okay yeah but yeah, because we, but because of things that happen later in the comic yeah uh <laughs> either way i'm thoroughly enjoying having rex around again now I do love all the changes, but I am upset they took out one of my favorite lines. It's when Alan comes back to Earth and the Immortal meets him. Uh, when they're about to fight, Invincible rushes in to stop Alan, sa saying Immortal is really weak and he would probably end up killing him if they fought. I I would definitely pay to see that, though, because honestly, fuck that guy. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, Oh, now I know why you have me read this one. Now I thought about <laughs> abstaining from this week's doodle after Bill just tore me to fucking pieces. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll power through for everyone other than Bill. I drew something actually disgusting this week. It's the seat. It's ah, oh, it's the sequit in the sink. So I hope you enjoy. Oh, Stay on guys. love Chris Wise. Oh, that's yeah. Gross. Let me yeah nice he's when got I, the swirl in there very nice yeah now when i first oh, wow. saw this i i saw the image before reading the email i'm like what the hell did he draw like i have no <laughs> idea what this is i was like is this some overhead camera thing broccoli pizza yeah yeah, yeah it's super gross yeah super no, wow this is a really great drawing 
of a sink <laughs> with gross stuff in it. I'm really proud of you, Chris. Yeah, you did it. And for the record, I, I your your last doodle of the Martian baby from Mars was just disturb. It was it was disturbing. It did a good job of making me feel like, ooh, I don't like Martians. So you, it's it was a good thing, Chris. <laughs> it's funny because yeah. we 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 played Helldivers. And Chris jumped in with us, and he said something about it, and I was like, "No, nah, it was it was garbage, bro." It was like... <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't. I was just joking. It was great. Ryan, Ryan, do me a favor and just put all of Bill's doodles so far on the screen. Oh right man, now. it makes me worry. Yeah. Ryan, Chris, be great. you shouldn't take Bill's opinion about. Hey, how good I'm the, the first to say that I fucking suck at it. All right. <laughs> And that's all of our emails to read, but we did get a, a video message from our friend Luke, which we'll stitch in here, maybe. Yeah. Or maybe here, or maybe somewhere else. Like right, knows. right, like right here. Ryan, Bill, Wyatt, and the sweet one. Hey guys, I went to the screening and I know we haven't had a bunch of fan spotlights in a while, so I figured, what the heck? Let's get some mini fan spotlights. Here they are. Enjoy. Let's start with your name. I'm Deshaun. Zuri. Eddie. Justin. Chris at Sunspots Comics. Alex Ortega. Morgan, huge Invincible fan. Eli. Eli. Sean. And Sean. Cameron. And Hector. Which came first, the comic or the show? Comic first. Mm -hmm. I read the comic. I really wanted to start reading the comics, but I didn't want to spoil the TV show, so just okay. been sticking to the show for now. But... Read the comic first. Watched the first episode, and I was blown away. Yeah, he needs to trust my judgment more because the ending of the first episode, I don't want to spoil it for people who haven't seen it, but it is crazy. Comic first, yes. There, when it came out in my local comic shop, shout out to Comic Madness. Out in Ontario. This series for I watched season one first and then had to read the rest of the comic, basically. Oh. Been a fan of the, comic, of the comics. Probably, I think I jumped on it after it came out about five or six years. The first issue of the comic, but mainly just watching the show so I don't get spoiled about what was going to happen in season two and three. So I started watching season one and then, you know, it kind of took a while for season two came out. So I read the first comic, probably got it done in like a week, and I, I was hooked after that. The show. Yeah. I read the comic book first. <laughs> Who are your top two favorite characters? I'm gonna say I like Robot. I know that's a <laughs> love, love to hate him, you know? <laughs> I really like where Robot goes towards the end of the comic. It's really interesting, but I would also just say Mark. I really like Mark, but you know, I, it's, it's a basic answer, but I like him. And I'm a big fan of Invincible because, you know, I've always wanted to have superpowers and he embodies what it means to be young and a high school with superpowers. Mark, of course, he's, you know, he's got to be the, he's the main staple of the series. You've, you've got to root for him, otherwise why watch it? Um, you know, and he's kind of Peter Parker-esque. I will say Invincible and Omni-Man, even though they're probably common answers. Omni-Man, of course, you know. Of course, Omni Man. My first choice is uh, Conquest. As soon as I saw him, I loved the guy. Um, and Alan the Alien. Alan the Alien. Yeah. And Alan the Alien. Ooh, I love Battle Beast. That's my favorite character. And Battle Beast. Battle Beast. Yeah. I say Battle, Be Battle Beast. <laughs> I say Battle Beast. And um, you say Rex Flood? Yeah, oh, for sure. <laughs> You just made TJ's day! Uh, Adam Eve. I like Adam Eve. Um, and Adam Eve. I mean, who doesn't want someone around that could, like, make a sandwich out of garbage? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Adam Eve. Um, I want to say the mom of Invincible. Which cast member would you have lunch with? Oh, that's easy. Um... What? I forget his name. I think it would be fun to have lunch with Seth Rogen. <laughs> I'd probably choose uh, Gillian Jacobs because I am also a massive community fan. It's one of my favorite uh, sitcoms, so that paired with Invincible, <laughs> I gotta choose her. Um, he was in Whiplash as well. Um... Steven Yoon seems like a really nice guy. I'd like to have lunch with him. Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen would be fun. We'd smoke some weed. <laughs> <laughs> 
Always the Omni Man. Oh. Steven Yeun all the way. Okay. I mean, he's just blown up, right, with everything that he's done. Beef. 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 I mean, beef and chicken, and steaks, <laughs> all those meats. Well, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've just been watching him. I mean, everyone knows him from Walking Dead. I'm sure you're glad, you know. But yeah, that's for sure, Steven Yeun. JK. JK Simmons. JK Simmons, yeah. 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 Seems like a really interesting guy. JK Simmons. Definitely, yeah. I'm a, I'm a big Spider-Man fan, so those old movies and him being J. Jonah Jameson, it'd obviously be him. I think Steven, just because he was my favorite character in Walking Dead. Adam. J.K. Simmons. Finally, which character would you hire for protection? Uh, Alan the Alien. He gets stronger the more he uh, goes through some stuff. I'm going with Battle Beast. Battle Beast. Honestly, I'm going to say something that like a lot of people wouldn't say. I say Best Tiger. I like thinking about Angstrom because he could just zip you in and out, zip zap wherever you want to go. He's just like, yeah, let's, you know, let's go have a sandwich. Boom, we're just there and out of. But but of course, right hand henchman strength. You want Omni Man? Come on now, who could stop him? Could the Hulk? No, probably Omni Man, just because of his track record. Oh, Omni Man, he's gonna be beating the crap out of Mark. You saw that first episode. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say Omni Man also. He's just so powerful and Omni Man for sure. It's just, you know, he's that guy. <laughs> Omni Man. Omni Man. He's been pretty popular tonight. I think everyone I knows that, that he can get down. <laughs> Thank you, Luke, man. That was so awesome that you did that. Like, you didn't have to do that. Like, you put together this awesome video and, um, you know, got to checking with uh, a couple of people, some of which I actually recognize the names of as listeners of the podcast, which is pretty cool. Yeah. That was cool. Um, but yeah, Shout that out was, to uh, Morgan really for uh, Rex Bloats being his favorite character. Uh, That's right. The the editing was awesome on that video. Oh, yeah. It was, yeah. Like yeah. Luke, it was really anytime, good. anytime good Luke edits something, anytime Luke edits something, I'm always like reminded that he is a very good editor and like mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. I'm impressed with what he's able to do. That's so, really good. Thank you, Luke. I'm... I was a little, I was a little surprised that like there were a lot of comic readers in the video, and not one yep. of them said that their favorite character was Dinosaurus. Oh, <laughs> not one. <laughs> you were surprised. And there was only one conquest too. Yeah, I was surprised. I was you know? honestly surprised. I was waiting for one, just one. <laughs> but man, I didn't know I was such a minority. I think the but... show has just done a really good job highlighting. The, the early character so far. Just wait. Your time will come, yeah. Bill. Your time will come. You're going to have your moment. Dinosaurus will do his title card bit, and then somebody else will be like, that was the best title card bit. Do you yeah. think he will be part of the part of a title card bit? Is that a hot take, Wyatt? Probably not. Uh, yes, probably I do. I think, <laughs> I think it will. I think issue 100 <laughs> will have to do with Dinosaurus, oh, and will have to yeah. do with the title card. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you're right. You're um, right. But yeah. So, and then that is all of our email messages. So we'll go into some news. There hasn't been a ton of stuff since last week. Now that we're back to weekly anyways. But so far, uh, they have done a few things on social media. They did that episode six comic to screen video, which is, those are so cool. They're, they're so such good. a fun, like yeah. short and just showing the images. And it makes me appreciate those moments in the comic even more. Cause like, I, I haven't gone back and done a full reread in a while. And so it's been neat to not only see some of those earlier issues, but now we're getting into like more of even like the middle of the comic where you're starting to even see the, the art style change a little bit too. And it's, it's so fun to see. And I know they did it a bit last year, every now and then, but you know, last year, like last, not last year, I mean, last season, last season, season one, it, it varied a bit more from the comic. You know, we talked yeah. about this a bunch, but this one, because it is so close, these, you know, panel to screen or screen to panel uh, videos have been so cool to watch. Like, I love them. Like, it's been a blast. I can't wait choose? to see this. There's so one. much. What's that? Yeah. How do they pick and choose? Because there's so much. Like, like we just said, like, there's so much. The show is the comic, more or less. Yeah. So, yeah. Especially yeah. this season. Ah, it's crazy. I can't wait for the, uh, the episode seven and episode eight ones. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. But yeah, there really hasn't been we've had a whole lot. Ahead, like Ryan. it's just been like a lot of cool memes and stuff. Like TJ mentioned at the top of the show, like all the Rexplode love has been like the news for the week is Rexplode. Rexplode is in the news and he is the news. And Rexplode is on the, the episode poster. He is every other meme that you see about regarding Invincible. Um that so that, blew 
blew my mind. The Rex Blood poster, <laughs> because I'm hoping that we get like the actual poster in the Skybound store. We haven't seen it yet. And they put all the posters on t-shirts and hoodies. And I want, oh, yeah, all you're right. I want, yep, I'm waiting yeah. for the Skybound yeah. store to update to put yeah, all that they on. They finally there. stopped I making the posters and they, Rex gets one. <laughs> yeah, they stopped right before making a Rex poster. Yeah. Come on, guys. Put it out we'll there. See. We'll see. <laughs> and then as of today, as we're recording on Tuesday, they uh, uploaded the little teaser video slash trailer for episode seven uh, and started sending out the Cecil text messages where you can get some of those uh, images as previews of the episode as well. That's right. And I thought they did a pretty good job with this uh, teaser trailer. Uh, it doesn't show everything. If you're watching this now, you've already seen the episode. So like yeah. not showing Anissa was cool, even though most people will know. If you're a comic reader, you know what's happening with this kaiju attacking. Um, yeah. But then like not showing some Amber stuff like, man, this this episode, guys, we get into it. We get into it. We get into it. Yeah, we do. Speaking of us getting into it, let's go back in time and have the past versions of us get into it. Uh, so we're going to jump now to our pre-recorded thoughts. We had only seen episode seven. You don't have to worry about spoilers for the finale, which is next week. Oh, my God. Uh, and then let's have them take it away past us. Go ahead. And here we are to talk about episode 207, which is titled, I'm Not Going Anywhere. Uh, so this is the seventh episode of the second season, and we're going to break it down kind of scene by scene. But before we do that, let's just give overall thoughts and impressions, just kind of general. How did you guys feel about this episode so far? We're now only with one left of season two. This is the penultimate issue is what I was going to say, but it's the penultimate episode. Uh, Ryan. Let's start with you. What did you think? Oh, God. <clears throat> Last episode, I said it might have been one of my favorite episodes um, of the show. It, it, and it was easily in my top five. And somehow this is better. Uh, this episode is I, I can't believe that season two, part two has one upped every episode in a significant way. I feel like it, I feel like this episode is so good. Um, and it, after it finished, we just like talked about how this is just peak invincible like it just feels like invincible um and everything about it um was just so great i mean i was on the verge of tears like this episode has some of the most em emotional stuff uh in the show yet um one of my favorite performances in the show yet and the action has been incredible and again can't t say this enough how awesome they've been at adapting the comic and surprising us in ways I can't believe that the two times that I was surprised in this episode because I should have seen it coming as a reader of the comics, but I still didn't. And it was a blast. Absolute blast. TJ, can I can I go next? I'm gonna go next. <laughs> so after we watched it, I said that I felt like this episode like culminated what Invincible as a whole is or the series if you were to describe invincible the series to somebody who's never heard of invincible why do you like it dude it is crazy action it's bloody it's emotional it's great story and all of that was in this episode so good i was blown away by this episode uh plus again let me fuck a rex blow dude like god damn <laughs> that whole, the whole like opening yeah. with him like oh my gosh dude it's it i mean one of you guys said it when we watched it but this has been like the, a rex blowed season so yeah yeah i am yeah we'll talk about it more but i couldn't be more happy with i mean i got more than i should have gotten more than i more than i was expecting with rex his character so yeah mm -hmm. How about you, Bill? I think everything that you guys said, plus don't forget the comedy and the tongue. Oh my cheek, god! Like um, wink yeah. to the to the audience. Uh, probably one of the nonstop funniest parts in the entire show was yeah. was in this episode. Couldn't stop laughing. I think TJ fucking yelled at me for laughing so hard. <laughs> he did. He, he, he did. He yelled. You that doesn't sound like you guys at all. It's funny. He's like, sorry that I wasn't, like, <laughs> wasn't even like rushing. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't like, you know, it wasn't even a, you know, it wasn't a laugh. It was just a loving on Rex. Screaming. You're low over there fanning yourself. Like, oh, Rex. <laughs> I could have yelled at you, but I didn't. I didn't. 
for fanning <laughs> myself. Anyways, it was, I, it was, I, 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 I agree with everything that you guys said. Um, I think this is one of the best episodes of the whole show. Um, and for all those reasons, it has a little bit of everything in this. Like, I do think I laughed harder at some of the comedy moments in this episode than I have at a lot of the jokes throughout them, even though it has been great. And there's been tons of funny moments. And like, to your point, Ryan, I was tearing up more so than really any other episode besides maybe the finale of season one. Like I remember getting, yeah. you know, teary eyed oh, yeah. from that. Yeah. And this one got there too. Oh, and to yeah. have all of that and awesome action and some of the coolest like fight sequences that we've had as well in a single episode is yeah, this one, this one's a good one. This, this is a good one. So jumping into our full breakdown starts out with uh, the very first scene we hear all will kneel before Grom and we see what looks kind of like a Thanos style person that we then very much same way that like Omnipotus was introduced. Yeah. But we see, of course, that he is a cosplayer taking pictures with people and that this is at Comic-Con. So we see some invincible cosplayers start to like pretend to fly by mark and he's like is that what i really look like and they all oh pose for a picture I, it's fantastic i just choose to believe that grom is a villain of science dog oh that's and good i like that yeah. yeah i like that seance dog that yeah. would be cool it, if he was like if he was dog. planting that Thank seed you. and then yeah. later on in yeah, like they uh, find uh, out. That's good. science dog or seance dog comic that we he like pops up that that's good very cool why don't I, forget don't forget those invincible cosplayers were the fucking title card. Yeah, and that was exactly. the, that was the first big laugh. The TV <laughs> yeah, they go to take out. a picture and they're like, "Look out, evil weir!" And then we get the title card. It's yeah. so awesome. Great. Yeah, so, it's such a funny. Awesome. Moment. I fell for awesome. it too. This is one of the many things that I fell for. It the, the episode opens up and I'm like, "Oh, here's a new this guy. This guy's new. All right, is this like a Kahul mm -hmm. type thing or Kahor type thing?" And I was like, "Oh, oh, they're doing comic and he's with Amber. I'm like, yeah. oh, this is good." Yeah. And yeah, because we're cool. because we're comic readers, we all knew what we were about to get, and boy, yeah. did it not disappoint. But we'll oh, get man. to that. Yeah. Quiet, please yeah. continue. So we get. I love a little moment that Mark says, like, "Oh, those are the hardcovers I've been looking for." Because it's just like you know, he's our people. You know, yep. we are those people that are looking for the hardcovers of the. It was really, really great, like. like seeing him with the bag, with the art portfolios sticking yeah. out, like. Having everything he needs and then calling out the hardcovers like that was like I was like, like oh shit that's can we the... just live here like you yeah. know you can't buy all those watch me like just it was cute and it was very fun yeah yeah and I spent a while probably not long enough but I spent a while trying to look at all the background characters to see if there was like references to other things I did see there was very clearly what looked like uh, the 13th Doctor from Doctor yep. Who who's uh, Jody Whitaker's version of the Doctor. Uh, hmm. There was like a pirate looking character. There was one that looked kind of Naruto esque, yeah. but I couldn't find any like very obviously this is so and so. I yeah. think they were mostly just generic, but they're walking through Comic Con and then Amber realizes they're in a line. And of course, we find out it is to see oh, Philip Schaff, who so is so the writer of Science or Seance Dog. Wait a and minute, yet... are we in a line? Oh my <laughs> yeah, god! Yeah. Yeah. Fucking it Ryan was, standing in a line for stupid pins. I, I <laughs> like this is, this is that's this the line is, for no. these pins was so dumb. They no, really no, didn't no, no, know no, what no. it's like to be it at Comic Con that. walking around with nice. people. No, no, this nice. is what, but yes, it was can I still standing in line for me? That's what I was gonna yeah. say. Getting it, get being on the show floor, <laughs> and getting a text message from Ryan, looking down at my phone and being like, and seeing, TJ, can you come stand in this line? So because there's something, there's a, a board game piece that's exclusive that I want to run and get that, oh, but yeah. I don't want to get out of this line because it's gonna sell <laughs> out. And being like, yep. and Bill yeah, was waiting in this pin line, and then I was like. I think I was like Amber. I'm like, wait, is this the fucking line? Like, <laughs> this is what we do. This is what we do, people. We are we are comic convention going nerds. I think we're going to C2E2 this year too. So keep a lookout. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they're in. She realized they're in line. It's for Philip Schaff signing. Uh, Mark's very excited to have him sign a Seance Dog comic. And then when he gets up there, we just get an incredible scene that is very much calling back to the comic scene, which we can, we can kind of like pause here too and say that this is the episode that Kirkman did an interview where he said, there is a scene that is a fan favorite moment from the comic that we had to do different because it's not in a comic and because it's animation. And we did have a few episodes. One of our listeners named Kenny wrote in an email yep. 
predicting almost exactly this. It wasn't that it was at Comic Con. It was like that it was, I think, at like the animation studio. Oh, yeah. But essentially predicting this same type of of gag where he starts saying like, oh, when's the new season of of coming out? And he's like, you mean the show? Probably not for another year. Animation takes a really long time. And he says, I can imagine how much work it must be for those fight scenes. Yeah, those take a while, but we cut corners in places to make it manageable. You ever notice how sometimes when someone's speaking off camera, so you don't see their lips moving and they start cutting off it camera. Went and it just so much goes on like, and on. Yeah. I would have expected, oh, okay, they make a joke about how the animation doesn't yeah. move. But Maybe it just one or two gags, one or two, but they literally, I feel like they listed every fucking thing they do. Yeah. Uh -huh. Back of the head. Oh my God, the, the animators. Pants, the, the pants, sometimes the they get carried, talking like this. Yeah, yeah. sometimes they get carried away. Sometimes they get carried away, and and the characters look like completely different characters, and it's just Mark <laughs> smiling, looking like just an anime the character. detail, and yeah, it's yeah. so good. The that was like we all the like in crowd, and you think they're moving it. because it's so far away, but they're really that they're really not moving at all. All oh, that was great. Yeah, yeah. One of the funniest moments in the show, and it does really like as much as people talk about that moment, or you see that moment from the comic get shared online a lot. It's very cool that like they they nailed that so well and nailed it in a way that's very specific to the show where like mm -hmm. people are upset how long it takes for the animation. And this is them directly talking to them of being like, hey, it takes a long time. And it, it was just very fun. Yeah. Very cool. I think also too uh, again, like how self-aware they really are and how not afraid, unafraid they yeah. are to, to just be like, yeah, we know. Like, you know, mm -hmm. one of my qualms that i had was that the animation i feel like is a little inconsistent with this season specifically not too bad but the fact that they called it out and the animators yeah. are like sometimes they're not good and sometimes they're great and like sometimes they get carried away like it just <laughs> it it, it yeah. made it all seem okay like it, it made it all seem okay like and there was i can't complain about it because they're already telling me they fucking yeah know. exactly you know? <laughs> there, there's moments later even in this episode where there are certain action moments that are like still frames almost. Yeah. And there was a part of me that noticed it and then went like, well, I can't get mad. They just told us that yeah. some yeah. scenes are going to be like that and others are going to be better. <laughs> like it made it funny for me, even when I'm noticing those moments that you maybe wish the, it was a little more fluid, but yeah. So great. So also, funny. Because you're just saying that Wyatt. I feel like I have to call it out now, but later at the end of the episode they do the opposite did you notice that there are several scenes while amber is talking where it's just her mouth and nothing yeah. else and then tears That's and everything true. like that it's like they mm -hmm. it's like they intentionally took the time to show the difficult part because this is yeah. where it matters and it was like oh yeah. i see what you did there yeah very cool very cool so there there we have that whole scene he says thanks he's like i'm gonna watch season two way <laughs> way closer now which is really funny yeah uh and then eve calls and tells mark that rex snuck out of the gda hospital he went on a mission by himself uh she's worried about him but she is busy stopping kill cannon so she asks if mark can help so he sadly ditches amber at comic-con and thanks her for holding on to all of his merch that he which, bought while he flies away he 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 Puts in a I love you right there, too, by the way, when he thanks her. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Adam Eve said she was tying up a loose end. She was getting Robot's ball back. Oh, yeah. Didn't I didn't ball, notice yeah. that. That's yeah. true. That's true. Which was interesting. Was I don't know cool. whether it was TJ or, or a listener. I, I knew, the conversation came up on whether or not that ball is TJ. something. And, yeah. you, you and I was like, very, no way. No yeah, way. Yeah, very like, very... <laughs> rightfully so or like angrily like tj shut up it's just a pretty fucking sure I did ball it. it's pretty just sure an I animated did it. ball and tj like cowered away like you hit him i remember he signed off he just did. no i'm 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 now a little bit more less sure that it's nothing and like now maybe it is mm -hmm. something but i don't know would that, be, that, that would be very funny if like next episode he's like amanda i found i, I was gonna do it <laughs> oh man it's the ball she i wasn't able to go it and stole it Dude. but eve brought it back it's DJ, the most important item of the season DJ, the fact you... that it came back at all <laughs> no. i'm the oh, fact no. that it came back at all i'm claiming a victory but if it comes that, back in a yeah. bigger capacity like you can hold it over the show forever. the tj podcast yep yeah uh, I'm yeah. going to grab my charger so, because my computer. Continue. Okay. okay. 
so Mark flies off, uh, and then we cut to the Walkerton Nuclear Storage Facility, where we see Rex is like kind of trying to psych himself up. His hands are sort of shaking because he is going up against Loved it. Octobots. Octobots. Oh my yeah, God. the PTSD that he was going through like was yeah. very, you know, remarkable, yeah. and and you could feel his out of his character. Terror. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it was very cool that like he gets this moment where he's like hyping himself up, and he's like. You're going to go rip off his tentacles and shove him up however many asses he has because you're Rexplode and that's how you do things. And I was Looked like, awesome. Like, the yeah, glowing. that's right. Oh, yeah, wow. it was yeah. such a cool, was like, like pose yeah. and like get hype moment for Rexplode. And TJ was vibrating back. next to me. I could tell. Like, it was <laughs> like, it was, <laughs> yeah. And I didn't yell at him one time. I let him be excited and express himself. Well, I it is true that, like, dream. Every time that Rex has gotten a big moment in this half of the season, because like you said, TJ, it's been very much like he's got a ton this half of the season. Every time I'm like 50% just enjoying it in the show and 50% my brain going, TJ must love this so <laughs> yeah. much. I'm so happy for TJ. <laughs> like, it's so great. Yeah, but, yeah he. But it so just Rex, got better. Yeah. yeah and, and so Rex goes to fight uh, and then we get Octoboss debuting his his very unique speech pattern and says do take more than dirt that hurt octoboss you hear words now am pain you hear <laughs> and it just listen listen we didn't use on and on like that we didn't watch it with subtitles do yourself a favor yeah put subtitles on to so you can watch so octoboss <laughs> yeah it's it's ridiculous yeah it's very very funny and like, rex wait, is just like why didn't you say something stupid sooner? And there's a funny moment too, where he's like, are all your goons yeah. this dumb? And you hear one of them just go, oh, oh. Like, yeah. Make like a sad <laughs> noise. Like, yeah. what? Rex so fighting, they're fighting for a while. Also, so first of all, like Octoboss, yeah. I wanted him going into the season. I wanted him and Powerplex, obviously like Rec, uh, Ryan more than Power, Powerplex, but so glad that we got Octoboss and it was fighting Rexplode and it was such yeah. a good fight scene him jumping around and just like whipping the boomsticks like oh it was so good yeah. the coin carry on and then invincible kind of flies in as rex is getting pinned down it seems like he's kind of in trouble so invincible flies in knocks octoboss off of him and they have a quick little back and forth where like rex tells mark to go handle the you know smaller goons because he's like i need this i need to prove that yeah. i can do this and very very cool anime style moment where octoboss oh is charging God. in and rex takes out his new little hand cannon thing that pops out of his wrist and just shoots a dragon ball blast at octoboss and knocks him out it was super super cool and so I love how he says, "Yeah, I how before maybe that. I'll open with that next time." <laughs> and like, I want to say, early in the fight, like, might have been right at the beginning. He's like rubbing his hand and everything like that, and he's like getting used to it. Like, it doesn't feel right. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So good, very cool. Uh, and so then, after uh, Rex and Mark are talking, um, he tells Mark that you know he felt like he needed to get back on the horse after his fight with the Lizard League. Uh, they talk about Mark having a fight with his dad and Rex is even just like impressed that Mark was able to come back from that has a funny joke about how like, man, you can regrow new teeth too. That's crazy. I wish I could do that. Um, and then, you know, asks how things are going with Amber. Mark says it's not great because they had talked in the previous episode about it. And so Rex is like, you know, I owe you one pick a night like we'll cover for you, you know you're you'll be off duty and the guardians will cover for you because we're still the best superhero team on the planet which is when we cut to the guardians hq where amanda is fighting a bunch of robot drones in her own big like monster girl type robot suit or not necessarily a suit a drone that she's which controlling with her looks as cool helmet. as it did in the comics because it's like a yeah. Yeah. it looks like a robot drone that also looks like monster girl like it yeah it, it's super cool looking. Yeah, very, very cool. She kind of gets frustrated with it, saying it's not working well enough, even though she smushes one of the drones and kind of storms off. And Rudy is still trying to talk about how he can fix her. They keep arguing and kind of just part ways. So do they mention in the show that each time she uses her power, the monster form gets more powerful but she gets younger no or has it only talked about her getting younger her getting as younger. far as i think they've only talked about her getting younger yeah, yeah. they haven't okay. um 
mentioned or insinuated that the monster form gets stronger, which is something when in is the that... comics, but I'm not sure if um, we don't know if they're going to do it in the show or not. I yeah. bet they don't. It, it's I... not it, it it's not clear in the comics until much, 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 much later. Um, yeah. And Plus, I think there's it's... an origin story where she the first time she That's transforms to very skinny You're monster right. girl. It's not uh, very. Yeah. Yeah. Good that makes me that makes me issue. want them to do it now. But I could see them not yeah. doing it. If they don't do the origin story, it'd be very easy to not do that. I feel like it would be a good reason as to why she doesn't necessarily care that she's getting younger because she knows she gets more powerful as she transforms. Yeah. yeah. It could be. Yeah. It could be, you know. Yeah. True. Anyways. Uh, Bulletproof and Black Samson kind of have a chat about, you know, how Shrinking Ray is doing. They think she's going to pull through, even though she's in the ICU. And Bulletproof just kind of roasts the team and oh. is talking about how much of a mess they are and how each one of them is just kind of, you know, just falling apart. I think it's crazy that that they said Shrinking Ray broke every bone in her body trying to expand out of so could you so that makes it even worse ryan like you I thought know. it was terrible it's before bad. did that make it worse i mean yeah that's that's pretty bad yeah, yeah. um so and they talk about it for a while and samson says like you know we're not the best superhero team on the planet but we're a family we're messed up in our own ways but we're unbreakable when it counts which is cool to know that like you know over they've had some adventures off screen with like omnipotus and all that but it feels like that like the fight with Battle Beast probably in season one and them yeah. all recovering from it, like built some camaraderie between them and built some faith in Black Samson in the team, which is cool to see. And it was great to get get Bulletproof some more time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, his dialogue was awesome. Yeah. And awesome. And, he, and, so he sounded like his own character. Like he didn't yes. sound like some copy and pasted superhero put here. He sounded like, oh, he's got a personality and I want to see more of him. Really yeah. hope they take his character in the direction of the comics too. Especially given that conversation. Oh, yeah. For yeah. sure. For sure. So then we cut to Immortal and Cecil arguing because Immortal has decided he's going to quit. Uh, he said that he was already broken, but Kate's death just finished him off. Uh, Cecil's arguing that he's not quitting. It's just going to be a leave of absence like they discussed. And Immortal kind of just walks out and is like, whatever, kind of call it what you want. And then Cecil calls Rudy back in to tell him his old job is available of leading the Guardians because... Immortal is leaving. Mm -hmm. uh, then we cut to Rick's nightmare as Rick is having this dream about D.A. Sinclair, who is now voiced by Eric Bauza. Right. Not, not Ezra uh, Miller. What? Ezra Miller. And I know. Yeah. Isn't it that sounded cool? very much I, like him. I, I checked like, the credits shit. and everything it's to double Ezra check, Miller's which back. I think we kind of assumed that Ezra Miller probably would not be back seeing as how there's a lot of controversy around them. But it sounds so, just fucking like him. Yeah, it's a great, they found a great, um, wow. a great replacement yeah. in Eric wow. Bauza. I hope I'm pronouncing his, his name right. But he, he sees D.A. D. Sinclair operating on him, wakes up from the nightmare, and William's trying to console him, but it doesn't really seem to work. Um, he's saying he can't decide what's worse, that D.A. Sinclair took him apart or that the government was putting him back together. And left stuff Which, out, too. Oh, that's... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we cut uh, to Donald, who is um, showing up to Cecil, telling him that he's resigning, much to Cecil's frustration after just having to deal with Immortal, being like, I'm quitting. And Cecil says, like, is there something in the water today? Or, mm -hmm. like, he's just very frustrated, you can funny. see. Yeah. Um, Donald tries to argue that, like, Cecil crossed a line when he lied to him and erased his memories. Mm -hmm. Cecil explains that that was never his call, and he logs Donald into a computer using the real password <laughs> and like credentials to give him actual full access. And Donald sc scrolls through a folder with tons and tons of videos of all the different times that he died. One after the other. And... So fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So awesome. Because that was one of the first things that I was talking about. I'm like, wait, so are they changing his origin? And then this was his origin. It fooled me into thinking yep. that they just reworked it and this is his origin. But the fact the that it is, dude, yeah. so fucking awesome that they're yeah. taking this much time with Donald. So As we were awesome. seeing one death after the other after the other, I'm like, oh, are we going to get some bread? But no. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. bread. Yeah. And using a yeah, very yeah, cool moment work it into rick like this storyline more you know i know they do it in the comic but this they 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 gave it it's due much more in the show i feel 
Yeah, this in, in the comic, I remember feeling like it is a B plot that is just like kind of filling out the world and making it more interesting. And in this episode, it was like it was an emotional moment. Yeah. Where it's like these characters that we really care about and have come to care about. And it is such like I feel like maybe I should have predicted it. But I just love the trope of like, once you realize somebody's memory has been erased, you have to ask like, how many times has it really happened? Exactly. And I yeah. never really even yeah. thought about that with Donald, but it's cool that they've like shown that, yeah, it has been happening a bunch. Yeah. Uh, so we cut to the Dean's office where Mark and Amber are sitting outside and Amber's trying to tell him just like, just say it was a family emergency. You know, it'll be fine. Uh, Mark eventually walks in and sees Dean Winslow his old high school principal, who's now the dean at Upstate University. Uh, and he explains that if uh, it was any other dean, Mark would already be expelled and that he understands Mark's been through a lot, but he needs to make a decision about what he is committed to. And Mark says whether it's college stay, or not yeah, college, whether it's college or something else. And Mark looks at the door where Amber's and it, on and the it other shows side. Amber. Yeah. And it shows her sitting outside and he says, yeah, I want to stay in Upstate. Yeah, he says, I want to stay at Upstate. And the dean says he doesn't really believe him, but he's going to give him a month to prove it. So this conversation cool. is, you know, are you with Amber and going to college or are you being a superhero? Because it's these yeah. two things are not working. And and Mark is like, I want to be with Amber. I want to be at the university. Yeah. Um, and I love how the dean's just like, no, I, I, I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. This scene also had, and we, and I feel like it was just a moment with, mark and amber's hands but then when i called it out i was like oh hands just because there's a thing with the comic book and the variant and, and not the variants and the covers showing hands a lot um but then it kept happening in this episode there are several times we're not going to call out every time now but watch this episode and there's a lot of hands being shown across all the characters in this episode yeah this episode's pretty yeah. handsy pretty handsy <laughs> oh that's actually the title of the episode pretty handsy. <laughs> pretty handsy. <laughs> So we get another scene with Donald and Cecil where Donald is like, you know, ex talking to Cecil about how he realizes now that it was his decision, Donald's decision all along to have his memory wiped. And Cecil explains that, you know, he asked to do it because he was trying to avoid, he thought it would be bad to carry around all of that trauma, that it would slow God. him down. And that's why Donald was doing that. And he says, do it again. Like it. He's, mm -hmm. he's agreeing to do it again right when he gets a phone call from William. And then we cut away from that. This episode was, it felt pretty redeeming for Cecil because Cecil has felt yeah. very much like yep. he's felt very uh, kind of like a jackass, like that is emotionless and stuff like that. And, and multiple times throughout this episode, Cecil has, there's one point where he puts his hand out and like at the end with Mark mm -hmm. and you can kind of see their friendship act. Like there's like Mark actually kind of trusts him. I just yeah. like that. He's not, it was being painted in such a, picture yeah, like it was before episode five we we finished episode five and we're like oh man fuck this guy he's he's you know, like, yeah. pretty shitty yeah. and this is definitely going down this path and it's mm -hmm. instead it's just like no no this guy is gray you know what i mean like there's yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and yeah it just yeah. adds to his character because he knows the truth and the truth is that he's not a bad guy and that he actually does do stuff for the better good but he doesn't care what people perceive him as which yeah. is what we were doing. We were perceiving him as this person mm -hmm. and he just doesn't care because it's not important. And now yeah. we know more about Cecil. It was just great. It was a good, yeah. good episode it, for Cecil. In episode five, I remember being like, you know, he's so creepy. He wants to take Oliver. Like he keeps yeah. being like, hey, but I'll take yeah. that baby. I'll take that baby. <laughs> and really, it's Don't because... Don't I pet that dog? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you're right, Bill. It's because he knows that like the right thing to do is to have more super powered people on his roster that he can help protect people. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't care that it makes him look kind of like a creep who's trying yeah. to steal a baby from Debbie. This, you know? yeah. like, this show does such a good job at giving like two opinions of, about one topic and them making them both right. So like they're, yeah. they're redeeming oh, Cecil. Yeah, so they much want of that. You, there's so there, I mean, there's so much of it that there was like Mark coming back as a superhero yeah. and not being ready after what happened with his dad um, all throughout mm -hmm. the first season. I mean, Mark and Amber in the first season, especially like who was right and who was wrong. It's like, you can see it from both sides. And yeah. uh, I think they're continuing to build that with Cecil. And that's kind of what we're seeing here. Yeah. So, yeah. 
so then we get a scene where Debbie is on her way home. Paul is driving her home from work and they're talking about how great she's doing now that she's back at work and back in the swing of things. Uh, Paul decides to ask Debbie out to dinner and mm -hmm. she seems kind of surprised at first and he sort of backs off thinking he oversteps, but she says, how's Thursday? So they're going to go on a date. Oh man. Together. I think their date is going to be at the farm. Invincible Thursday. What farm? Where they're going to, Oh, where they're, uh, where they have lots of brown chicken, brown cows. <laughs> for, you, audio listeners, for audio listeners bill <laughs> tilted his head very slyly as he said that. brown chicken brown <laughs> ryan's so mad he won't right leave anyway. it he just took his headphones off he's leaving <laughs> what farm he has what farm thank you so debbie walks inside the house uh oliver adorably runs up to her and says mama and he's like running now and last episode he was just like crawling and like barely standing up yeah. so i think another subtle way to show that he's like doing things faster than normal babies uh april's there and she's explaining they they were learning about animals how he <laughs> seems to be learning more quickly than any child she's ever worked with um she hasn't seen any sign of powers showing up yet but says if she had to guess that they'll hit him earlier than they did with mark uh and that's right when mark comes downstairs as well. Uh, Debbie gives him a hug and then asks how school thing, how school's going and how things are with Amber, which are the two things that are going really bad mm -hmm. for Mark. So then they go and sit out in the backyard and are just kind of like having a nice little heartfelt talk, very similar to episode one, I believe, yeah. when it's yeah. like before or it's at, just after Mark gets his powers and they're kind of sitting in the same spot. Um, and Mark says, you know, I thought telling Amber the truth would fix everything. And Debbie has a great line of like, it's always better to know the truth. Like it is always the right call to just tell without the truth. any hesitance either. She's like, no, yeah. the truth is always better. Like, no. Yeah. Yeah. Of all the but things Debbie through. is uncertain about, yeah. that was one that she is like very much like, no, it would have been yeah. better to know the truth. Yeah. Uh, I like Mark how asks kind of like, like she, she says that because of everything that she went through. And then that's yeah. where this conversation leads. And mm -hmm. because yeah. Debbie is in that situation that um, Amber is in. And right after she says that, like, oh, it's, it's always best to know the truth. Mark straight up asks her, like, how was it with with Nolan? So, yeah. Yeah. And they she talks about how, like, you know, at first it was really great that he was so romantic that he would <laughs> bring you know, her the tree. Also very, yeah, he would bring her a tree thinking it was just like a better version of flowers and how her getting to teach him about Earth kind of made them equals, which is like. I feel like you see that hit mark of being yeah. like, well, Amber doesn't have that for me because I grew up here and I did grew up without powers. And so that's not part of it. And then Debbie says like, but it was really difficult being alone all the time and having to parent for weeks on end. And she says, is it really a relationship if you're mostly alone? And Mark asks her if she ever wishes that she never met Nolan. She of course says no, because then I wouldn't have you. But when asked, like, what if we didn't exist or what if Mark wasn't there and she didn't have to worry about that? And she just says, I don't know. So very, very much a moment where Mark is kind of sitting with his emotions about him and Amber and trying to decide what the best thing is to do. And what an like, obviously perfect, like, like, of course, talk to the person that knows best what yeah, you're dealing exactly. with, like literally the mm -hmm. only person on the planet that can even like come close to the conversation like to, to come closer to what you're trying to what you're struggling with um yeah. and i love that she just doesn't really have an answer to you know if mark wasn't there would you know if mark never if they never had kids would it have been worth it after everything he's been through and knowing the lies and everything like that and she doesn't have an answer and that it's kind of an answer so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so then we get a scene where oh. uh sorry rick she says i don't know right yeah she says I don't is know. that what Mark says at the end to Amber. Yeah, it How is. And then Amber says that's mm -hmm. an answer. Yeah. And then Amber and says, says that's, that's, an answer. Answer. that's an answer. What? Oh, you like God. circled this... around into the point yeah. that you just oh. made, Ryan. Like you this called it out, but then guys. realized that you called it out. Yeah, it's, it's really, really great. So we cut to uh, Rick standing up on the ledge of a roof. Uh, William is there as well. Rick has been drinking, standing on the ledge, wondering if it's high enough. And Donald shows up after, of course, getting that phone call earlier in the episode. Um, he he's, tries to talk to Rick, tells him he knows how he's feeling. And he reveals that, you know, he's also a cyborg, essentially, and explains that he's died 39 times and that he thinks that he's about 98 percent machine at this point, which was, I thought, a cool like specifics of because yeah. they keep it kind of vague of like, 
how many files he's seeing there yeah. or, or where he is. Um, but he tells them that, you know, he has had them erase his memory in the past, but that William and Rick have made him realize that that was a mistake. And he says, every time I died, each time I was put back together, it's because I helped make this world a little better. You did the same when you fought back against Sinclair, when you saved Invincible and William's lives. We're not our bodies. We are the decisions we make, the lives we change, the people we love or who love us. I don't need to forget that, and neither do you. And it's like, Dude, this uh, is the Donald and Rick plot line of this, and Donald I'm tearing and up and thinking right. about my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's it's incredible. The, I, it's so well written and such a, like... Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just fantastic. Yeah, it's not even a B storyline. There's like A, B, yeah. and C. This is like like D, and it's great shit. It's yeah, great. yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, amazing. So yeah, Rick eventually steps off the ledge and and hugs William, and we cut to uh, Mark talking to Amber and explaining that he has kind of taken Rex up on the offer to have the Guardians cover for him and that he's off duty for the night so him and Amber can spend time together. Uh, he even says that he told Cecil that going forward, he needs two nights off every week and says like Cecil wasn't happy about it, but they need me. So, you know, whatever, it's fine. Um, and he says, you know, I know it hasn't been easy recently, but I'm making a choice and that choice is you. So he's trying to fully yeah. commit to this relationship. Great montage scene too, right? Oh yeah, my god! Exactly. What's the song? Isn't there a song? There's a song. This is right? the I didn't one. Find the, the song. One song of all of these episodes oh, from season one and I two tried, that TJ and I could not find. I tried yeah. shazamming it while we were watching it, and it didn't pop up, which makes me think again. We're recording this ahead of time. Um, it makes me think that maybe the the song hasn't been released yet, and then maybe it'll imagine. be released when I think that when happened with think? the song on the first season. Um, yeah, could be. and then it gets released. I'm guessing around the time Here's, that the episode goes live. The other but way that are... I find songs, like if that doesn't work, is I just type in the word lyrics and then type in a line of the lyrics, which works like yeah. 99% of the time. This song doesn't exist. Like it's the lyrics <laughs> oh, yeah. are out there, it's not out yet. So I bet it's not, I bet it's so, not out yet. Yeah, yeah. maybe, it's, maybe, but I mean, well, either, either we'll know by now or leave it in the comments and tell us what yeah, song right. it was if you know what the song is. Didn't you say it was The weekend, or or did you say it sounded like The weekend? I think it oh, sounded it's... like The weekend. yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Mm. It has a little bit of that vibe. Everything kind of sounds like The weekend though now. <laughs> Just But yeah, great, great montage of them flying through the city, like flying over the water, it's like just very good fun, and like, romantic yeah. superhero mm -hmm. date flying. I like the, the way they were flying together. Does that is that weird? Because like normally it's how he does carry her like Superman carries Lois Lane, right? But mm -hmm. they were like hugging and embracing. Yeah. And there's a moment felt... when there's a moment when he comes down vertically and I think she's standing on his toes like she's. Her oh, feet yeah, are on yeah that's what I mean. They're feet. like face to face cool. standing. Yeah. yeah. Standing parallel to each other. Yeah. And I just I just liked it. It's yeah. And, they... and he was flying. Yeah. Were they hugging when she's looking at a reflection in the water and touches the water? Were they hugging and he's flying? He's under, up? He's, yeah, he's he was under her. her she's yeah. like over his shoulder. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's very cool. cool. Uh, yeah. So they they kind of find a restaurant to to sit at and talk. Um, they start, you know, having dinner, talking about how they could take a trip to Hawaii for spring break that Mark could have her right on his back and he could hold two suitcases. And she's like, what about the hotels? And he's like, they have great camping there. Like and she starts saying that, like, you know, some things you can't solve. They start talking about school and him needing to study. And he says, like couldn't I just punch somebody instead? And she says, you can't punch your way out of everything. Or there's some situations you can't punch your way out of. And then we hear Anissa say, Mark Grayson, invincible, come with me now or this woman dies. And she grabs Amber by the neck and introduces herself as Anissa, an agent of the Viltrum Empire. And this and is where, a, this is the moment cartoon. where we're like, here we go. Cause now yeah. I'm, incredibly stressed and i don't know what's about I, to happen and this, there was a little bit of dialogue here back and forth before they showed her face L yeah. fucking love that because it's but i you feel like i don't know i can only relate to myself but i feel like even more so because we knew what this meant it was even more ominous for people who read the comic and just knowing what was about what was about to happen and how like terrifying An anessa is so fucking Good. And I, I, I'm going to say this now and, and not wait to the end of the episode. At the end of the episode, when after we watched it, I said, like, Anessa was cool in the comic. They did her so well in this episode. Like, I loved Anessa in this episode more than I ever liked her in the comic. So, yeah. 
I yeah. can't believe, I don't know if I was just so into this conversation and this date kind of vibe. I can't believe I didn't see this coming. We knew she was in I the show. I didn't. All of yeah. a sudden you hear her and then like, it's all on Amber's face and her eyes. Yeah. And then when she grabs her by the throat Dude. and her eyes start trembling and she's just like, and Mark's just like, please do not. And he like, so yeah. he, he tells her, you know, I'll meet you up in the sky. Don't hurt anybody. She yeah. goes, then they embrace, they hug. And then she's, she's just like crying. And yeah. Oh my God. Hold on a second. I forgot what, I forgot what she says. She, she says, crying, comes back. And then she says, he, come says back. he says, I have to go. That's and she is. says, come back. That's what it yeah. is. He speaks first because they hold and it shows her like grip his back. And, and he says, I have to go. And she says, come back. Like the and delivery yeah. goes up. I love too yeah. that like it was so uh, tense and so heartbreaking. Anessa went up into the sky and they had that conversation. He didn't go up in the sky right away. He went home, grabbed his suit, put it, uh, put his earbud in his ear and was like, say so all yeah. like screaming yeah. to say so. Yeah. Oh, it was yeah. so intense yeah. and just epic. So and crazy. this is we as the audience relate more to Mark because that's who we want to be, right? We want to be invincible. We like we're watching a superhero story, but seeing Amber just have an, an, an it was a cartoon hand around a cartoon neck. <laughs> and I was like, Amber looked like she had a bee on her and she didn't want to move. Yeah. And like, it, it was just so well done. And it, and, and I felt fragile. I felt like, you know what? I'm not a superhero. And if I were in this scenario, I would be like fucking Amber right now. I would feel yeah. hopeless. I would, I would not be having fun. This was not a good time. Wow, guys. It yeah. was so good. And I think to your point, TJ, how they do, they have some of Anissa's dialogue without showing her. I think that's meant to almost put us in Amber's shoes of like, I hear this voice that's very serious. Yeah. And now there's a hand on my neck. And it like was this slow build of like, what the fuck's happening type of tension up yeah. to that moment where it's, yeah, very emotional. And she said at the away. end of the episode that she felt like it was iron yeah. wrapped around yeah. her neck. And like, I yeah. couldn't, I couldn't fathom. Yeah, being man. that like at I I I can't, I can't like express like you know being so so fragile Vulnerable. like feeling so fragile oh mm -hmm. man um yeah. and this was was this the first character me it can't be that we've ever been introduced to that we didn't see prior to this moment like not in a trailer not in a screenshot not nothing like we've seen I mean, like oh this is uh, bulletproof yeah. in the show this is this I'm hoping that she's not. I mean, again, we haven't seen any promotions for this yet, right? Because we're 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 watching. True. This. They could I, release oh, true, a teaser true. trailer. Or oh, a but like on. that's that was awesome that we didn't know what she looked like, and so we were Amber in that moment. Like we don't yeah. know what this person yeah, looks like, so that was a a really great experience. And taking a step out of all this, she looks fantastic. Like they, they yeah, her character so design good. is yeah. perfect. Perfect. She looks awesome. So Mark, Mark flies up, like TJ said, he get, well, he gets his earpiece, starts yelling at Cecil. He flies up there and meets her in the sky. And Cecil is like, we don't have a lot of options right now, Mark. So keep her talking, like keep, keep her talking as much as you can. Um, Anissa starts talking about how they've been studying Earth and how human civilization has less than an 18% chance of surviving the next two centuries without the loss of billions of lives. Uh she starts talking about how the powerful of this world destroy their own home. They strip resources for themselves. Large areas of this planet will soon be uninhabitable due to human greed. And Mark is having to like defend. He's like, yeah, you know, it's we're humans. We're messy and things like that. And she starts explaining how like Viltrumites have the technology to fix the climate and to save more lives in a single year than Mark could in a hundred. That like if they actually took over the planet, that humanity would thrive in a way. And this I is very much said, the like Thanos yeah. moment where you're like, it's kind of hard to argue against this Mark. Like I mean, the, the, the logic between, here is, yeah, yeah. The difference between Thanos is that Thanos wanted to actually kill 50%. This is like yeah. them not saving lives. This is and them she not even killing, not out. taking she even, one life. She specifically says human death has like no effect. Like, yeah, it, we it, don't gain anything. Yeah, we don't anything want to that. kill. Yeah. 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 She's like, exactly. she, I think she said, even for, for the Viltrumites that do like the feeling of killing, it's not what we're about. Like, it's yeah. not our total. It's not our That's goal. Right. Yeah. I yeah. would be down for it. If I were Mark, I'd be like, all right, fuck it. 
So, and I yeah. think that shows I think that shows how great the writing, not just of the show, but of the comic is too, that like they add so much depth to even like Anissa's character and and her position on like who the Viltrumites are that Anissa could be the main villain of this whole season. Like there's enough there to dig into that they could spend several episodes on it, but she's just this in the halfway yeah. through an episode randomly shows up no introduction and now you're in the middle of it and it's this yeah. like uh-huh. terrifying ticking clock of like what's gonna happen yeah. crazy don't forget they've tried with multiple different viltrumites multiple tactics to get mark on their side or to convince mark like nolan was like look how fucking fragile these people are i'm gonna kill a bunch to show you how they don't matter and then like Thula. um cr- Krieg was like, and Thula were like, this is what you have to kill me if you want to show that you're stronger. And then Anissa's, you could tell Krieg was like, go there, try to talk to Mark, speak to his human side, side. manipulate him, manipulate Mm -hmm. him in a way. And and she still couldn't fucking get it. So like Krieg's like, fuck it threaten yeah. and say conquest and then send coming. the hammer and then, right. and then be like yeah. that's it mm-hmm. yep mm-hmm. so they're trying multiple different ways to try to convince mark and try to like oh, conquer earth in a way yeah. and it just goes to show like the viltrumites are kind of manipulative and and they don't actually mean that what she's saying yeah, yeah. So uh, Donald uh, tells Cecil that they're like trying to scan Anissa and what what they can scan from her. They calculate Mark to have less than an 18 percent chance that he could survive a fight with her. I did. Cecil says is very poetic because that's how much Anissa, the percentage that Anissa just listed about Earth, which was I didn't get that. So I watched it like three times and I was like, 18 percent. Why is that poetic? But it wasn't until you doing the recap where you said, oh, humans have 18 percent. I'm like, 18 percent. Isn't that what Cecil said about the (laughs) very cool same thing tj <laughs> no i, I caught it's it the first a, time i almost said it out loud like 18 percent is the number is oh yeah, yeah. With, yeah. this is very this cool was, that like it's a cool way to make it so that like mark is in the same boat as all the humans like he is you know this is his home that's that's he is so good facing the oh. same fate you know yeah very cool it's also felt um, very dragon ball z where they were like her power level is 2000 and yeah, there's yeah. only 50 this episode is the most yeah. dragon ball z i already talked yeah. about rex doing his big explosion we're gonna get a fight later that's very dragon ball z oh yeah. it's so great i'm loving it um so they scan her say that uh cecil tries to see if uh da sinclair has any reanimate ready for the field and he's like no none of them are ready so he just drops the call immediately <laughs> Um, and then satellites start picking up a kaiju that is attacking a cruise ship a few thousand miles away. So he tells Mark, who then tells Anissa, saying, like, you know, if you really should care about human lives and you care about saving them, prove it like you won't try to stop me. And she's like, well, I want to see how strong the son of Nolan is. So she follows behind him. They fly over to the cruise ship uh, and Anissa watches Mark struggle with the kaiju for a while, trying to save people. And there's some very, like, very dark scenes where you see members like on the lower decks of the cruise ship where it gets flooded and then they're just like floating in the water and you don't see those people again. It's not like we see Mark pulling them out and they start breathing. Yeah, it's no, just assumed that like yeah. there are humans dying and they want to remind you of that, that while Mark is struggling and not ending this quickly, there's humans that are dying. So yeah. the ship is still starting to sink. Um, or the it's attacking. Uh, and so Anissa finally decides to step in after watching by just flying through its head and shaking the blood off her by coming to an abrupt stop mid air. And the and blood the just, blood just off. fucking come oh, on, come come on. Cool. stop it, <laughs> stop it right now. End the podcast, and drop the mic. Awesome. We're done. It's been a great eight years. <laughs> Later, everybody. Just, and it was like yeah. a moment though where i was like did they really just do that like is we that all what did happened? We all like, it's so come quick. on yeah so cool yeah. so cool i loved her watching so the, sh- the entire time too and like you know music's yeah. building and it just keeps cutting to her like just watching like what's this yeah. guy doing like kind of but also kind of studying like it was good mm-hmm. it was good yeah so the ship is still kind of sinking even though they took out the kaiju so mark and anissa push the ship to a nearby island Afterwards, Mark is like very out of breath and she doesn't seem to be out of breath at all. And he like thanks her for the help. She says, you're welcome. And to the people who are listening to us, just to remind Mark that like she's not stupid. She knows there's probably a government agency listening. Telling Uh, They. Yeah. Yeah. 
They uh, keep arguing about whether or not Earth would be better off under Vilchmite rule, and Mark, you know, continues opposing her, eventually, like, getting in fighting pose and being like, I think you should leave. And the whole yeah. time Cecil's like, bro, maybe don't. <laughs> yeah. She's she's a lot stronger than you. You're you're probably going to get wrecked here. She's like, I tried and... logic. I tried reason. I tried helping yeah. you. We saved all these lives and still. Yeah. Yeah. And she says, you know, the last thing she says is like, remember that we started with reason oh. and then zooms forward and uppercuts him so hard, his goggles shatter. And this was a moment where I was just like, that's that was another like anime style Dragon Ball Z. I'm going to hit you so hard. Things just explode. Yeah. And then you fly off into the sky. It was so cool. Such a cool moment. Yeah. Ugh. That kind of kicks off the fight. Um, Mark tries to fight her several different points throughout the air. Anissa is just kind of unfazed. She's like dodging out of, of any of his punches. Um, Donald and Cecil start like talking about what their options are. But none of the other heroes stand a chance. They say it'll just be like, you know, feeding them to the slaughter. Um, even their other options, like different bombs or stuff, their Mark and, and Anissa are moving too fast that by the mm -hmm. time they send something, they could be gone and be, you know, miles and miles away. Eventually, Cecil just gets on the comms and starts telling Mark to agree to like say that you'll take over the planet just so that she'll like accept it and yeah. maybe leave. Again, and another Mark awesome is just Cecil like, moment. No. He's like, kid, say the words. It doesn't and it, matter. Yeah. Just, the, the, just a close say up of the him. words. And, and like, again, a great little line delivery of just like, no. Like and then, yeah. uh, and, and then, like, oh, and then it, when the music kicks in too, he says no, and it's like yeah, Din -in, the and then it gets theme. interrupted yeah. because he whiffs. He like it doesn't work because yeah, he just can't match up. But that is such a cool like. I know you, Bill, you were talking about it earlier that Cecil is like the guy who will do whatever as long as it's for what the ultimate good is, even if it's betraying like your morals yeah. and your principles. And Mark is the one who's like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm yeah. not going to. I'm not going to sink to your level, Cecil, and betray this thing that I have committed to, even if it's just words. Like, oh. very cool moment. And the, there's, the, I don't know if you have it, the line of like, um, her being the shit out of him and he goes to, to fight back and she's like, you dare interrupt your education or something. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. I was never a good student. Yeah. Never a good student. In this episode, yeah. being a hero is bullshit. <laughs> but in this episode where we just had the conversation with him and Amber yeah. about having to study and like, why can't yeah. I just punch it? He was literally in the Dean's office having to apologize for not being a good student. Yeah. Oh. He means it. So the the I put the fighting or in parentheses, the beating continues as uh, Anissa slams Mark into the ground, pinning him under her foot. And it creates like a huge crater with cracks going through the earth. Mm -hmm. uh, and she has him pinned down. And Cecil again is like, just say the words, Mark, just just do it. And Mark just says, like, he looks up at Anissa and says, just do it. Either you need me or you don't. So make up your mind. Like, oh, yeah. What? Just calling her bluff that like she hasn't killed him yet. And she's tried so hard to convince him that maybe she won't kill okay. him if he just All right, guys, it. if you didn't think Mark was a good hero, this is what makes a good hero, okay? When Mark was fighting Lucan and struggling, and Lucan had his finger on his head and was pushing him into the ground, Mark was thrashing and trying really hard to actually survive because he was trying to save someone other than himself. Mm -hmm. In this yep. moment, the only person that he could save was himself and he didn't care he yeah. didn't care in this moment he was like just fucking do it because i'm not i'm not going to change who i am and that yeah. makes mark such a good fucking hero guys yeah. oh my god we see him black You're out we see him essentially yeah. die and just let it yeah. fucking happen yeah yeah incredible 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 so eventually anissa steps off of his throat it like he doesn't respond for a second. Like maybe he's just blacked out and then he finally starts like coughing. Uh, and Anissa says, killing you is not my task, but soon another will come. <laughs> I pray that you come to your senses before then. And then she flies off out into deep space. What a, ah, oh, what a, what a way Woo! to end this too. Yeah. Man. So uh, cool. Uh, so Cecil teleports in after they realize like she's going off into deep space. He says, like, keep an eye on her teleports into Mark and explains that, like, hey, the whole two nights a week off deal is not going to work because we need to get ready for when they're coming back. And Mark, you and know, he, agrees and he said that and was a hell of a gamble. Like, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, 
and Mark says, uh, he, Mark says something like not for me or something like he, he essentially says like, yeah, like, you know, and, and, and Cecil does this. Yeah. Smirk he didn't out. have a choice. Mark really didn't have a choice in that yeah. moment. That was what he was going to do. Well, I think it, there was a, there was a, a line about how like, th like this is who he is. Like he's the kind yeah. of hero to do this. Like Bill was just saying. Um, yeah. 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 It was great. So cool. So then the next scene, we are back in Amber's dorm as Mark shows up with his black eye and all beaten up. <clears throat> uh, Amber and Mark kind of talk about Anissa and it's just this like, it's felt like such a real portrayal of like people who have gone through trauma where you've been either like attacked by someone or someone broke in your house where she's like, how did she find us? And Mark says, I don't know. And she says, like, <clears throat> could it happen again? Is she going to come back? Like, it's this fear that is not going to leave Amber for probably a very long time just from being in this moment. Like, it's I, terrifying. I think of J.K. Simmons in episode eight. And I think of, you know, Stephen Young in episode, you know, four of season two. But Zazie Beats in this episode, in this scene, is in the running for maybe my favorite vocal performance of the entire show. Yeah. She is like yeah. they they I don't know if I don't know what kind of headspace she got in or what, but she is so close up on the mic and she's like whispering and like it's so intense and she's like Sorry. terrified still. It's like it's still it like it's like it just happened to her. And it's yeah. it's almost hard to listen to because of how of the yeah, traumatized she yeah. is. One of mm -hmm. the things she said was that I might not be extraordinary. Like my life might actually be meaningless, but it still means it's something still, to me. Yes. Like it yeah. means something. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Cause I'm the main character in this story right now. And you guys are the main characters, your story, but think about it. I still am the main character in my story, even yeah. though I'm meaningless to you. I'm still, it's just like, man, what a good yeah. line. Yeah. And even just her speech about how like, she realizes that in their relationship, because she does not have the same kind of power that Mark has and the world that he's living in, that she says, she says, I have no agency yeah. in this. She and that almost felt like a little bit of like a meta commentary as well of Amber being like, I'm not going to be the damsel in distress in your story. Like, I'm not going to allow myself to fill that role because it's yeah. terrifying and yeah. it, and I have no power over it. Like, yeah. And yeah, like, I... Cool. I her saying I I can't exist in your world. I tried, mm -hmm. you know. Like, yeah, I'm, and and in it realistically speaking, how many times would Lois Lane get captured and be yeah. like threatened by death before she's like, "Fuck this!" Like, yeah, this yeah. is this is what separates Invincible from like that kind of comic. Book do you do you have tropes. any of the other lines written down? I know that it it ends with them both like just in tears on the floor and she says so how does this work now mark and uh so, so, he says i don't know and she says maybe that's an answer and he says i'm sorry she says me too that's how yeah, it kind of wraps fucking up brutal but it, it does yeah. there was the moment of like bill mentioned earlier in the episode where she says that you know when she had that woman had her hand around my neck it felt like iron yeah and then yeah. there you know mark says i wanted to kill her i wanted to kill her for touching you for touching you and yeah. And that part I could feel the parts of my dad, the parts of me that are like my dad bubbling up when uh, I thought that you were going to. be. Yes. Hurt. And he, oh, said, he said that my, my dad would lie to my mom and he would tell her that everything was going to be OK. And I can't say those words like this yeah. scene. Are you kidding me? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It's yeah, incredible. It's dumb. Yeah. It's dumb. And it's, it's such a great stupid. it's such a great way to show again. It's it's it. I mean, it is them breaking up. I don't know that they ne necessarily say like our relationship is over. We're not seeing each other anymore at the end of the scene because it just ends with them saying like, we don't know how this works and that's an answer. Um, but like, it's such a good portrayal of two people just realizing that this is not going to work and it's not people mad at each other and throwing a lamp across the room and like, you They're know, so just like overly dramatic. It's just that they're like, broken by the fact that not only that this happened to them but that they can't fix this that they yeah. can't figure out how to make it work yeah ah. i have a question so, so. now that that scene is over how mm -hmm. just how many episodes do you see amber being in in season three hmm. let's say it's eight, eight episodes probably probably one maybe because two william has already been in more than you would expect knowing the comics Donald has been in yeah. way more than you'd expect knowing the comics. 
I'd like to her still I'd like for her to still be around and like even Debbie has been in way yeah. more. Like they've they're giving these characters more to do. I don't know if I don't know. I could see it being like two or three. Um, but yeah. I don't know what they're gonna do. I don't know. I, I would think say at three. minimum one that we're not gonna just like not ever see her. Yeah, but I hope we I, I think it just depends on how they want to focus the story. Cause like I think it's a huge benefit to have her in the story when we want to show what this world does to average people like yeah. she's such a good window into that because she cares about mark and wants to be a part of this world but sees how you know dangerous it is having her in it so yeah i think I'm and curious. i think I, don't know. I think also too like there there would be a missed opportunity if we if amber wasn't involved in some way in the show when mark and eve start having feelings for each other and seeing like how mark deals with that like getting over Amber, yeah. but also how Amber yeah. deals with it, Mark moving forward with Eve and stuff. So I, again, it doesn't have to be anything because this There's is a opportunity mutual there. split. This is a mutual yeah. split. So it may, it makes sense for both of them. And I think Amber would be mature enough to be like, yeah, you know, you're both superheroes. Yeah. It makes sense for you. She's which not is, as yeah. much in danger, yeah. but which I think she's going to be in it more. Yeah. I think it's, I think she's going to be in it more. Like, I, honestly, we're going to get, you know, Amber comes back for, a quick you know i think like one issue storyline um yeah we'll get that but i think there's gonna be more to it too yeah yeah i hope so i hope so what i appreciate too before we move on is that i just like how eve isn't really a part of this decision at all like with mark like it's yeah. it's mark really up until this point i mean still really doesn't have any interest in eve romantically yeah really at all yeah so Which is i like how they didn't make it a love triangle how they made it really about like this is why they broke up. Yeah. Like it's yeah. not because and of love this... and feelings. It's because of this. And like we talked about, I would like to see more of Amber in the show. I'd be curious to see what else they do with her. But looking at the other side of it, this was so traumatic. You know what I mean? Like maybe, maybe she doesn't want to be in that circle. Like maybe that's too, like that's too yeah. much. But I if do want. If Amber was like, "I'm moving to Ohio and I'm probably never going to see you again," I would be like, "I get it. Like that's that's okay. Yeah. You can do that." I don't know. So that uh, we cut to Mark kind of sitting on the roof by himself after that moment, um, just quietly kind of looking out at the football fields, and he gets a phone call from his mom mm -hmm. and goes to answer and says, "Hi, mom." And we hear Sterling K. Brown's angst from Levy say, "Hello, Mark." And we cut to the inside of the Grayson household where he is holding a portal towards Debbie and baby Oliver. And he says, when are you coming home? With no music and no douche, no yeah, effects. Nothing. Just so haunting. And then just cut to black for the credits. I thought we were going to cut to black as soon yeah. as they were like holding each other and crying. Because like the music, the piano song during that scene was amazing. Yeah. And like it was like I could see it. I could see the go to black in that moment. So for him to be up on the roof, I'm like, oh. Oh, there's more. Okay. I had no idea. I had no yeah. idea that this was going to ha happen. I fell for it all the way until the, the moment he speaks, which was such a fun experience that we fell for mm -hmm. it. Um, and his voice, man, it's so good. When, yeah. when are you coming home? Oh. When are you coming home? Yeah. So great. And just makes me very, very excited for next episode. But before then, we get a post credit scene of Alan flying through space. Uh, or, well, we get... In space, then we see Anissa returning to the Viltrumite ship. She's reporting to Krieg about how the boy is refusing both reason and heritage. Um, they get an alert on the screen about the, uh, there's something out in space, and it's Alan. Uh, Anissa flies out to fight him. Well, we get the funny little moment of Alan like almost getting run over by it and be like, mm -hmm. did they see me? Oh, my God. I, I hope they didn't see me. Oh, they saw me. And, and you, you just see, see like Anissa flying this out. Way and then going yeah. straight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. So Anissa flies out. She goes over to him and uh, they start fighting. But he's noticing like, huh, that hurt a lot more last time when I got my eyeball ripped out. And, and he fucking punched Anissa and made that bitch bleed. Yeah. Which and that Mark was a cool way to show that like Mark hit Anissa yeah. a couple of times, at least I think. And yeah. just she's totally unfazed. It was a cool way to show that like Alan has leveled up. Alan, you know, yeah. he, he got some XP. He's on and the, I liked how she said here. she kept talking about Unopens. Like she's like, no Unopen is this strong. Like yeah. what's going on? So yeah. Alan said in the last episode, like I'm not going to fight you. Uh, talking to Mark, I'm not going to fight you because then I'd win and yeah. then I'd feel bad. Like now, there's no question. 
Yeah. Alan would yeah. rip him. Al- Alan's been upgraded to exceptional plus star star. There you go. So yeah. He's, yeah. he's very strong now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so he, Anissa starts saying that like the, the, prison scientists in the Viltrumai prison will like tear him apart. And Alan's like, Oh, prison. Oh, I've been looking for your prison. So he pretends to be knocked out essentially and starts being carried away by Anissa while we see his eye peek open, showing that he is not actually knocked out, which is the end I, of episode 207. I love that scene. I love that. We got it. It feels weird that they didn't end with those two bangers, like with coming together. Amber, and then cutting to um, uh, Angstrom Levy, and then it just being like, boom, no post credit scene because that's what you got to sit on. So yeah. I think yeah. I think this was probably this was I'm, I'm willing to bet this was a decision they had to make because they want to show Alan and whatever happens next in the next episode, which means it has yeah. to happen in this because you can't have that scene happen in the next yeah. episode and what they want to do next episode. So I think yeah. they had to make the decision of like, yeah, it would be great to go with a cold end because this episode feels a lot like episode seven of last season where it ends with the we need to talk. And it's when are you coming home, Mark, calling him on the phone saying, hey. And I also thought it was interesting, like Mark has a really bruised up bloody eye. Is he going to go into that fight? Is he going to go into, you know, next episode with a bruised up eye, similar to how Nolan went from seven to eight with his bloodshot eyes? Oh, because in yeah. some of the trailers, no, like, we see him like flying through what we he, assume yeah. are going to be things, and he doesn't. That could no, be he does. I think he does. does. He? Maybe I think he, does. he does. Yeah. So I don't know. It's it been was... a while since I've watched the trailer, and I'm not going to watch I don't it again want... before. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just thought it was interesting spoil. that connection with last yeah. season in this too. Yeah. For but, sure. you, do you think? Yeah. Do you think we get a breakout? In next episode? Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. That's do what you think. Do you think we get? Battle Beast in yeah. the next episode? Yes. Yeah, dude. I think so, yeah. yeah dude. I think we get the prison. I think, the we, I think we get Nolan. Finale. I think we get the prison scene next episode, which would be huge. Yeah. Unless that's unless they're saving that for all like multiple episodes, like the slow play of them communicating and everything, which actually could, be. could probably be better. I don't know. Actually, could now be. that I'm thinking about it, maybe you get that. You got the premiere too. You got a finale and a premiere back to back. And again, they knew that they were going to get a th- season three. Each storyline. Each storyline yeah. has to end on a banger cliffhanger. Yeah, maybe just setting up the the big however, thing in the prison. However, not actually yeah. doing it. A banger cliffhanger could be Nolan saying, "I think I'm." Listening. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm thinking. That's what I'm saying. Um, like set that up and then do the big thing next in the premiere. Oh, do you guys want me to tell you whether or not he has that black? No, eye? no, I don't want to no. know. No, I don't want to know anything about the trailer again. I'm pretending it doesn't exist until after I watch that episode. Okay. Because the black guy, I mean, but he does go right home. I don't know. Anyways, I don't yeah. want to. Uh... <laughs> so that brings us to the end of the episode. We now have our doodle segment. So who would like to start sharing uh, their doodle? First? So I've known Ryan for since I was 11. 25 years, Ryan. I don't know where this is going. 25 years. Okay. <laughs> If you time. did not draw hands, I never knew you at all. TJ. <laughs> <laughs> TJ. I would love to have drawn hands. I would have loved to have drawn Rex Flood's hand. Again, hands. Hands all over this episode. Hands. Hand, hands, hands are, are very hard to draw. Very hard to draw. They Extremely are. hard. They are. Harder than collarbones. Harder than no collarbones. No way did I draw hands. I might have drawn something more hard, though. But anyways, I did not oh. draw hands because hands are complicated. It's funny because okay. I, I I, actually... Okay, go ahead. You you try. You're, no, you, 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 you go first. No, I, I was just going to say, like, I tried to do it. Like, I tried... What I, so, we <laughs> called out hands in the middle of the episode. However, yeah. Invincible reached down... To grab Rex Blood's hand to pick him up off the ground, so oh, I tried yeah. to recreate that, but actually put the gun in uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Rex's hand. Mm. But he tried to make it nice. even more complicated. It is. <laughs> it was awful. It was awful. So I didn't I know go what, that. I, I know what that I direction. Drew. So Ryan, you, you know, know what I drew? Yeah. Any well, other? You a hundred. We got we to guess Ryan's first. We got to guess oh, Ryan's okay. first. What I don't. I'm going to guess no, that you drew... Well, no, everything I'm guessing is hands. I was going to guess Anissa's hand around Amber's neck. I have no idea. There's too many hands. Too many hands. All right. I think you drew the kaiju. 
Because you've been into creatures lately. Oh, yeah. Oh! oh! You are correct, oh! Bill. Ryan nice. and fucking creatures and aliens. Very good. Oh, yeah. Great use of the red, of course. That's really good. Now, now I want Wyatt to go next. And, this and might be one of my favorite. Up because he drew, and he absolutely drew Anissa coming to a stop and the blood flying off. I did not. I did not. Oh, I thought you, about if, it. If anyone could have, it, it would have been you, Wyatt. <laughs> I thought about it. Mine's very similar to that uh, in a way. And again, hands are real hard to draw. So oh my be God. nice, okay? I didn't draw hands that well. But I drew oh, Mark shit? getting That's uppercutted really so hard that his glass, that his goggles just shattered. Awesome. That's really the good. only cool. thing, very Wyatt, very that's amazing. I feel like it could have been perfect. If he was squinting, if he had just lines for his eyes. So the know, reason I, I the reason I drew his eyes open is there is a like a single frame if you pause it mm -hmm. where you see his eyes after they've broken and he looks terrified and yeah. it's really funny if you fair. freeze right okay, on that fair. where he's just like <laughs> as he like flies up <laughs> and I was like I have to try and draw that. <laughs> oh um, man, I have no so idea. Do you want me to go next or you do you want to go? Because I know. mine is all uh, full. Mine is awful. <laughs> it is the worst I have ever done. Mine, as bad as mine last last one. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I can go. Now. I can go. What do you go guys ahead. think for me? Um, what did Bill draw? Uh, really maybe know. Octoboss. Oh, uh, no. that would be good. Yeah. Octo. I don't know. Maybe his little squid men. Hmm. I think Octoboss. I think you're right, TJ. I think he drew Octoboss. Or it's okay. Donald's chest. Dude, I almost drew that. Yeah, I almost yeah. did, and I almost. You know what I love is that that is a callback to a ho horrible arc of the teacher with the bomb on his chest, or the. Oh yeah, kind of. Uh, you yeah. think so? I mean, the it, it looks exactly like that in the comic too, in Donald. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, no, I drew something. I drew people, or a person, yeah. which I knew that I said I wouldn't. But this is so easy because it's the back of someone's head. Dude. That's so good. That's so smart. <laughs> with the, that's with dialogue. And it says dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. That's very funny. Uh, again, this was the worst one I've ever done. And I did not have time to like really go through and fix it. But. Oh, shit. All yeah. right. Nice. Those and this is and boobies. A... Yeah. <laughs> her missed like really weird looking boobs. Uh, yeah. I didn't expand them banana enough. shaped. I didn't They're banana shaped. Them enough. <laughs> so, yeah. her standing, it's, it's like her standing behind Amber, though. Yeah. Nice yeah, reveal. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. What? We'll episode, post them on guys. our Twitter. Oh my God. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Especially uh, that brings us. Yeah. No kidding. Like, there, I feel like that we feel that way every time we talk about one of the episodes, but when it's an episode that ends and you already are feeling like, wow, this was one of the best talking about it diving into it there's just so much more to find that that is impressive and and surprising and i can't so believe cool. like so i loved this episode and little things like the 18 percent or the i don't know like there's simon rastiopa yeah like this was a this was one of his episodes he oh, yeah. fucking yeah. crushed nice. it like it's perfect yeah. it's wow it. yeah. yeah and that means that we only have one left so we will be back we next week with the finale of season two of season two episode eight thank you so much for listening for watching if you're watching on youtube uh send us in your doodles if you're gonna do your own doodles send us some emails to tell us what you thought of this episode and we'll talk about right. them at the beginning of next episode uh and i can't wait to get to that finale and see what happens oh man that's right all, all right, right. thanks until next time see you guys Bye. 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 What, um, what episode is this? This is for seven. Watch. This is the intro for seven, but people will have emails that they've written in about six. They're like, wait a minute, how do the rules work again? They got to do talking to listeners from a week ago, but ourselves from like two weeks ago about an episode that's airing in a few days in the future. <laughs> so it's a lot. Summed up perfectly. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So this is the intro for episode oh, we don't. 
seven, where we're talking about the emails from episode six. It's all right. Yeah. Well, only one more week, guys. <laughs> Why? Can you can you do it again, please? We're recording the intro for episode seven, where we're gonna insert our pre-recorded thoughts about episode seven. But at this point. People have just watched episode six and so have emailed in with their thoughts about episode six, which we're going to read. And in those emails, they've included their doodles about episode six. So we're going to do all of that and be like, and now here's our full recap for episode seven. <laughs> There's got to be an easier way to fucking do this next year. There's got to be. Go. Yeah, but we're all we're going to go initial thoughts, aren't we? Like, hey, what'd you think of episode seven? And I'll be like, what the fuck happened in, in episode seven? Well, people are going to be talking. No, about we don't have to do. We don't have six. to do initial thoughts of seven. We don't need to talk about seven. No, yeah, people are right. only going to be talking about... Yeah, people are going to be talking no, about 6. We can, and we do have we're going to be talking about people talking no, about episode no, 6, but no, we're talking about no, episode 7. We're we talking can about talk seven about episode 7. And 6. Yes. All right, let's just do it.